Hello YouTubers. Uh, this is going to be the first video of a series of videos that I'm planning to start uh, to teach how to develop a web application, a professional web applications so that you could actually put out there and um, you, you could you could um, uh, sell or or you could actually join a, a professional organization and become an effective part of developing web applications within this uh, organization. Um, I'm trying. I'm. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of videos out there that will, you know, uh, probably even even uh, more theoretical information and more, you know, very um, very technical focused um, uh, videos that will teach you, you know about how to do this trick or that trick but what I'm the new things that I'm trying to do here is to actually introduce a level of um, connectivity with what the real world business needs and how do you communicate your technical skills to that world you know to how how, how to develop software that actually fulfills the business needs and therefore makes you a professional web developer that could actually go out there and 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 write software that people will use in, in, in the hundreds or even in the thousands so just like any video you know we want to we want to start talking about you know what what are the tools but before we start talking about that uh, I expect you to know a little bit a teeny tiny bit about uh, how to write code uh, this is not a course uh, for you know uh, beginners who don't even know how to write code at all this is a course for people who know how to write code but want to effectively develop web applications in in, in a fast pace uh, yet they are these these applications need to be very uh, professional they need to serve business needs they need to be as well um, very business focused you know not not to get caught into some technicalities that you know may or may not be very um, um, fruitful to the business so I expect you to have some understanding of of what coding is so if we if I go in in a, in a very simple um, notepad and I write something like I expect you to know what this is and what iteration is and 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 how to effectively optimize a process like this and how to be able to you know move forward with um, using something like this in a business need. Um, if you don't, then you may go to um, the many 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 videos either on Linda.com or plural site or even on YouTube there are many 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 videos out there that will teach you the basics of programming but this is more focused to someone who's um, either freshly graduated out of college or uh, have been you know you know looking around and playing around with code but they want to take that to the next level where they actually are able to develop software for businesses where, where their skills are actually valued uh, from from a professional perspective so the first thing you want to do uh, there are some prerequisites now that we got some um, tools that we need to have in order for us to start um, our course and the first thing you want to have is on a Windows operating system you want to have Visual Studio so if you go on Google and type in Visual Studio Visual Studio and you go into the main page of Microsoft you want to go to Visual Studio IDE and you got this page of download Visual Studio which will take you to three different um, options where you get to actually get Visual Studio you, can, you get to get the professional you get to get the enterprise and you get to get the community uh, the difference between all these three is is very minor differences. They're not really that big. 
you know it comes down to whether you want to have team foundation servers so you could you could share your code with other people and uh, some other differences that I'm not you know you could, you could just go to the website and figure it out for, but for our course here you don't have to pay for Visual Studio Professional or Enterprise um, you could just use the Visual Studio Community Edition once you start clicking on that it'll just kick off your download and you could move forward with the installation so once you're done with the installation um, that'll be you'll be set you'll be pretty good to start uh, with this course um, and I'm going to start with a very simple um, introduction to what we're trying to do here so we're we're building web applications so that means that every single web page you go on on the internet is is a, an, a web application that is either very simple that just serves um, very simple needs or really really complicated web applications like uh, when you go to Hotmail, when you go to uh, Gmail, when you go to any of these you know really you know interesting um, web applications that have so many logic behind the scene so why web applications and why are these important because the world have moved uh, through few stages so far from a software development perspective we have moved from uh, console applications at the very beginning like people started to write applications that simply looked like just a just a black monitor there's nothing in there and then they started writing application you know to do things you know for them and they they started to get really creative about this, you know, so they started to write games, you know, they got the, this whole ASCII art going on, you know, they got, you know, they, they got fully fetched applications that just run on the console. And then a little bit after that, the world started to move forward to more um, a, a graphical user interface applications. So instead of that um, console window or terminal, the world started to use things that have interfaces like this guy so people started to actually be able to you know just click on things instead of typing commands all the time in order for them to get you know what they need and at this level things started to explode enterprise wise you know the, a lot of applications uh, were out there to serve business needs uh, but there was a little bit of a problem with these applications which is that my machine is different than your machine and John's machine is different than Todd's machine so it's it's all these different you know as a, like not just operating systems but also um, hardware architecture that makes executing a desktop application different from one PC to the other. So people thought we want a more of a universal experience. We want an experience that will allow us you know to make sure that everybody out there is using the applications and seeing the very exact same thing without having to worry about all the dependencies that come in with a, with the uh, desktop applications. So people started developing web applications. Uh, for instance, Facebook is a web application. Um, uh, PayPal, LinkedIn, all these, um, even even this very website of Microsoft. You got menus now. I'm pretty sure the menus that I'm seeing here are exactly the same menus you're seeing at your machine, and so on and so forth. Uh, a little bit after that, it in parallel actually. Uh, another technology another way of uh, communicating with computers have emerged which is uh, mobile applications and web web applications and mobile applications are these days going hand in hand uh, that's because uh, not a lot of people want to install apps on their phones and and not a lot of people at the same time want to have internet connection in order for them to get something served to them. So think of a calculator app on your phone. You don't want to have internet connection to just calculate something really quick. But at the same time, you don't want to download something as big as, um, uh, um, uh, say, LinkedIn, you know, uh, the entire 
uh, internal system of LinkedIn in order for you to be able to use LinkedIn. So you just want to go to a web page and start using whatever. And what if you're not even sure if you want to use the app or not, um, and so on and so forth. Just a little while ago, uh, Google announced that they, they are going to demote any websites that are in the ranking of websites. So if you go to a website, like if you type in soccer on Google, any websites that are not mobile friendly, they're going to be demoted. So they're not going to get the highest ranks, you know, when it comes to uh, 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 ranking on, on Google. So for instance, this is a website. This is a web application for US soccer. If you go to um, more tools and then developer tools and then you decide to go to the mobile view let's refresh that guy real quick so you're noticing here that they have their menus shrinking probably not the best um, mobile friendly website out there but you're noticing that these menus have changed from the way they were when the website was in, in, in full shape Look, these menus in here, they used to be just, just a drop-down menu. So things have changed. Um, so mobile development and web application development, uh, these two are now going hand in hand. And, you know, no one could actually predict, you know, how things are going to, whether web applications are going to be, winning in this race because they don't require any installation and downloads and permissions. Some people have complained about how some um, mobile applications are asking for permissions. They're asking for permission to your storage, to your camera and all that. Web applications don't do that unless you actually do something uh, that will trigger the web browser on your phone to ask for your GPS location or something like that. However, mo mobile applications do not um, they do not require internet connection all the time. So that's, that's what's going on right now and people are moving further and further from there's still out there desktop applications, there's still out there console applications um, but for, for, for this particular, but, but these applications are going away and people are moving more towards using um, web and mobile applications uh, and even web mobile friendly applications and we will talk about you know how what are the right things you need to have to, to have your web application also mobile friendly so you don't have to worry about you know whether you need to to make a, a mobile application version of your app you just need to build one website that is a web application that's pretty good and make sure that's mobile friendly and all these menus and all that functionality could be magically transformed to a uh, to the mobile experience uh, so that's that's it that's all, all I want you to do is to get um, Visual Studio and start looking at uh, starting an ASP.NET MVC web application so if you go to a file and you start in a new project once you're, you're done with that um, it'll initialize some templates and then you go to uh, web and you want to go to ASP.NET web application with the .NET framework and we will talk about ASP.NET Core and why this is awesome for cross-platform um, and then just start with a very simple name say a demo um, here, what we want to choose is ASP.NET MVC application with MV MVC down here. And from here, you know, by default, um, it will build together for you a, a fully fitched project, a uh, full blown project with models and controllers. And views in it and you don't have to know what these are right now we will talk about them in detail but more importantly I want you to get to that level where you actually get to install Visual Studio and you get to start a an ASP.NET um, MVC application and once you so now this is this is in place if you look at the Solution Explorer you should be able to see um, 
controllers and models and views these are our main things that we want to focus about there is other folders out there that obviously you're noticing we will talk about those all these other um, folders contain things that are just as important uh, but they are serving these very three uh, pillars of a web application if you go your 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 success here is determined but if by if you click on uh, running your app whether with Google Chrome or, the, or Internet Explorer or whatnot once you click run and it pops up that very page that you're seeing in Visual Studio that very page up here it's taking a little bit there it is once you once you get to that point where you get to actually do login and register and all that I want you to play around with that. Just play around with it a little bit until next week uh, when we release our next video. And just play around with that. See what is, um, what can you change. Go to the views, change a few things. See what happens. Play around with the login and the registration. Uh, try to hack around your way and try to just very simply understand uh, how is all this built together. Uh, the reason why I'm choosing an ASP.NET MVC um, as my framework and my software is simply because um, you'll, you'll have so many um, um, uh, JavaScript libraries and frameworks out there that does pretty much the same thing. But what I've noticed is that these JavaScript libraries and these uh, web tools are have a very short lifespan so if you spend so much time learning one framework in just about a year uh, that framework is not used anymore and there's this new flashy thing but ASP.NET has been out there for so long and um, it, it, Microsoft have invested so much into it Microsoft even invests in JavaScript libraries but if you're going to build from my perspective, my opinion, if you're going to build an enterprise application, you want to have, you want to introduce some sanity so your application would live at least five to ten years uh, ahead without having to worry about some dependencies here and there that will, you know, eventually take your application down and make it unmaintainable. So take a look at that, uh, play around with it, uh, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching.